Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And today is a very special episode because it's all about my component of the year. Well, the component of the year award, the coveted award goes to the Deckware Zen Triode Amplifier. Now I reviewed it back in July. And I had a sneaking feeling that it was going to be the component of the year because it was just so special. First of all, it sounds great. I kept listening to this amplifier long after I needed to, to do a review. I just loved it. I kept listening to different speakers and different combinations. And even speakers that it shouldn't have actually been a good pairing with um, were still there was always something there. It has this musical, uh, engaging quality that few amplifiers at any price have. And the price for this one is $995. It's made in the U.S. at Deckware uh, in East Peoria, Illinois, with mostly U.S. source parts. Um, <clears throat> as you can plainly see, it is a tube amplifier with a tube rectifier. That's kind of unusual at this price. Uh, it's point-to-point um, -point wiring, zero feedback, um, so many really interesting features that you don't usually see on affordable products. And it has, oh, one of the best features of all is it comes with a lifetime warranty. Now the Zen Triode has been, well, it's Deckware's first design, first product. And this is the 25th anniversary of the company and they've been making the Zen Triode for 25 years. I think there have been five or six revisions along the way, so it's not exactly the same as it was 25 years ago. Steve Deckert, the designer, figured out better ways of making the amplifier and improving the sound of the amplifier over these 25 years, um, which is, I guess, why it can come with a lifetime warranty, because he knows pretty much everything that could happen to this amplifier. He's kind of got it covered, right? Now, there is one spec one little spec i got to get out of the way really early after i've told you all that good stuff it's a it's a two watt amplifier 2.3 watt per channel integrated amplifier and i'll get more into that in just a second but the, the power rating now the power rating is could be a stumbling block for a lot of people say oh how could you how could it's not gonna make any sound at all with just two watts well mm, not so fast buster no I used it with a high sensitivity speaker in my Klipsch Cornwalls. No problem. It sounded great. Did so many things well. But I also decided to try this amplifier with speakers that on paper at least couldn't possibly work. And I used the uh, LS50 Meta, the Kef LS50 Meta, my speaker of the year, which is 86 dB sensitivity. That's a pretty low sensitivity speaker. And you know what? The little Zen Triad sounded great with that speaker. Now, of course, it's not an ideal combination for somebody who wants to party, uh, rock out, feel the bass thumping in your... No, it's, it's not going to do that. That's not what it's for. As a matter of fact, Deckware does not recommend using this amplifier with speakers of less than 90 dB sensitivity. It, no, it can play loud. It's not going to play crazy loud. It's going to play loud enough. It's going to keep your, your family up late at night if you're playing it at its maximum level, which I was getting in the mid 80s, high 80 dB range uh, with this amplifier on the uh, Kef Metas. Much higher, much louder, obviously, on the Cornwalls. But yes, 2.3 watts will play fairly loud. So if you're the kind of person who lives uh, in an apartment or you have a very small listening room, and you're not into loud, even if you have fairly low sensitivity speakers, I wouldn't rule this amplifier out. That would be a mistake. I gotta take a little detour here to think back. Just a few days ago, I was at the Macintosh townhouse in New York City to listen to and do a video about the MC901 Macintosh monoblock amplifier. 900 watts, 300 watt tube amp, 600 watt solid state amp, married together in one chassis, listening to some amazing Sonus Faber speakers. It was a $100,000 system, and I absolutely loved it. I was cranking the hell out of that combination. I was playing it way louder than I normally would, playing recordings that I knew really well, and it was mind roasting how good that was. 
<laughs> but you know what? I came home after listening to a $100,000 system with a 900 watt per channel amplifier. And I came home <laughs> and I listened to the 2.2 watt, or is it 2.3 watt deckware amplifier on the Cornwalls and also on the Kef LS 50s. And you know what? No, it didn't sound, it didn't sound like the $100,000 system. Couldn't play that loud, not by any stretch of the imagination. But in terms of engagement, in terms of beauty, of sound, of soul, the little deckware was no slouch. Now, the $100,000 system is unobtainable by almost everybody, right? Everybody who's watching you, right? But the deckware is obtainable. Not everybody out there, I'm sure, can afford a $1,000 amplifier, but a lot of you can. And I, I'm just so excited about this amplifier on so many levels. I mean, for many things I just said, but it just makes you want to play it. Now, one of my friends, by the way, is, has one, <clears throat> and he's using a, the Klipsch RP600M speakers, stand mount, bookshelf speaker. Those speakers are currently selling for about $450 a pair. And you could use a DAC like, um, well, maybe a, an AudioQuest Cobalt, a Dragonfly Cobalt or Red or something. So you could get in for well under $2,000 and have this incredible system. Because the RP600Ms are high sensitivity speakers, by the way. I think they're 92 or 94 dB sensitivity. So they'll play a lot louder than the uh, LS50s do. And he just loves that combination, loves it. And he's had some pretty serious electronics in his house, and he's played the, um, the, R the RP600Ms with 300B amplifiers, of course, way more than this guy. And he, he's just so happy with that combination. I've been doing this a while now, and I know that a lot of you have more than one set of speakers and more than one amplifier kicking around, right? So even if you already have a system that's pretty, go that's pretty good, and you want something that's just that much more special, this is it. Now, the other thing I've got to point out is that Steve Decker, because he's been building this so long, 25 years, he knows how to make it, and he knows how to make it super reliable. I think they were always reliable, but he's learned at, on the job. So it's very easy to live with tube amplifier. That's not true for a lot of tube amps. They're more higher maintenance, and fussier and if you wanted to change the tubes you might need to call in a technician to do that for you. You can change any of the tubes in this amplifier on your own. No expertise is required, including the, the power tubes. They're self-biasing. That is extra cool. By the way, he estimates that the tube life, because if you've never owned a tube amplifier, you might have some concerns that the tube's going to wear out and you have to get new tubes all the time. Well, first of all, none of these tubes are terribly expensive. But Steve estimates that the tube life should be around 5,000 hours. And the other great thing about tube amplifiers, this one and most, is you change the tubes, you change the sound of the amplifiers. You can change the sound for free with those little switches right in the front. There's two switches. One, the switch on the left is the input selector because there's two inputs. That's the part about being an integrated amplifier. So it has a volume control and it has two inputs. So in that sense, it's an integrated amplifier. Anyway, so the switch on the left in the front is the input selector, one or two. And the, but the switch on the right is the bias switch for the input tube. And you, it's high or low. And that's, changing that switch significantly changes the sound of this amplifier. Not, not at all subtle. There's no right position. There's no better position. It depends on what else is in the system, the speakers, even the music. And you can change the position of the switch while you're listening. So. I use it all the time just to hear what's going on, and I think that's really cool. You can also change the sound slightly with the impedance switches. Now, there's an impedance switch, a left channel, right channel, right near the back on the top, and from high impedance to low impedance. A as for the sound itself, it is very, very much a tube sound, meaning it's uh, dimensional, it has body, 3D quality to the sound of each instrument and voice you hear. It does that really, really well. But it's not a soft sounding. It's not a mushy sounding, blurry, 
sound the amplifier. Not at all. It has speed to it. The bass definition is actually very good. It goes surprisingly low. Uh, something you associate with needing a lot of power to do to make great bass. No. With, again, with the Klipsches and also with the Kef LS50, the bass was very satisfying. It does not this, is, this amplifier does not sound thin. It does not sound wimpy. <laughs> Definitely not. Don't, don't even think that that's, that's the weakness of this kind of design. Oh, it's only 2.2 or 2.3 watts. Not gonna... No, it's, it's like I said, this, it's satisfying. I think you got a handle on where I'm coming from, right? How much I love this little guy. I really do. And, you know, like I said, it's just so funny that it comes on the heels. I'm making this video just days after going to the Macintosh townhouse and hearing a $100,000 system with a $35,000, 180-pound amplifier with 900 watts. And now I'm listening to a 2.31 amplifier that weighs 16 pounds. And I'm excited in a different way. That, that system, the townhouse system, was a thrill. A, a joy ride for me. I had the best time. But I also had a great time with this. So yeah, I think we got this down, right? The deckware Zen Triode is the Audiophilia component of the year. I'm very happy about that. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I do, Please join the 160,000 people worldwide that have subscribed to this YouTube channel. And if you have already signed up and have a subscription, thank you so much for doing that. I truly appreciate it. I am grateful. Um, but I should also point out that there's a, there's a Patreon, and you guys should check that out. And that can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. And I will link to that directly below. More shameless self-promotion. You guys got to check out the uh, t-shirts. The I got Audiophiliac Daily Show t-shirts and mugs and face masks available through Teespring. And again, that is linked to directly below. Um, what else? Well, you should check out the playlist. We got playlists for more components, more speakers, uh, music, headphones, lots and lots of information here on this site plus but wait there's more plus interviews interviews with audiophiles and interviews oh audiophiles like joe the cop oh god a fellow brooklynite but this guy built his own room he built his own horn speakers he at that time which is about a year ago he was designing his own turntable with a linear tracking arm he's got a whole machine shop i mean a real machine shop in his basement the guy was incredible and the comments on those videos, were, because there's two of them, they were completely over the top how much you guys loved Joe the Cop. And when this whole pandemic thing is over, I will go back and revisit Joe the Cop. I'm sure the turntable will be done. He'll probably have built another house by then. Anyway, look for more in the future. But for now, those two videos uh, have withstood the test of time. They are incredible pieces of uh, journalism by, by yours truly. Anyway, uh, I think I can now say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching, and I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon.